members of the clergy, local government dignitaries, and students, enthusiastic students, I must say. It's my privilege after 10 years at Washington and Lee to be with you on a day that many of us have longed for. As we celebrate the opening of this gorgeous building, I'd like to also recognize some individuals and groups who are represented here today, without whom we would have been unable to achieve this incredible step forward. I'd like to thank all the donors and my dear friends of the Lexington Jewish community. I'd like to extend a personal thank you to Paul Weinstein who started his fund and scholarship 25 years ago because he knew that something really needed to be done. We have several representatives from Glave and Holmes today. We also have uh, Andrew King, project manager for Kelstrom and Lee. We have Carol Bailey, who was my newest best friend, the um, project manager uh, from facilities management. I would like to spend a special thank you to Dennis Cross, VP for Advancement. Dennis took a special interest in this project and is, along with his colleagues in development, helped raise the funds to make the Hillel House possible. I'm so glad that all of you are here for this momentous, exciting occasion. Now I'd like to introduce Hank Dobin, Dean of the College. Hank Dobin served as Dean of the College at Washington and Lee for five years. He earned his BA in Philosophy and Psychology from Yale University in 1974 and his PhD in English from Stanford University in 1982. Before coming to WNL, Hank was an English professor at the University of Maryland and the Associate Dean of the College at Princeton University. His scholarly expertise is Renaissance English literature, especially Shakespeare. Hank and his wife, Bonnie, have been active members in Hillel since their arrival in Lexington. Typically, an invocation at the beginning of a ceremony calls on a deity to grace the gathering with his or her presence or spirit. But anyone who was present at last night's Shabbat evening service knows that such an invocation is unnecessary. If you saw our numbers last night, heard our voices last night, felt our spirit last night, and sensed our pride last night, then you know that God is already present among us and has already blessed this house. Although I will end with the traditional Hebrew prayer recited on special occasions, I will instead focus on the human rather than divine as I call us together today in gratitude and celebration. On behalf of all of us, I want to offer our collective blessings on the men and women, both with us today and who could not be present, who have made this rather fantastic dream of a Hillel House an even more fantastic reality. I want to start by offering our blessing on two visionary rectors of our Board of Trustees, Phil Norwood and John Don Childress. Their foresight, their commitment, and their faith, as well as their substantial personal generosity, created the impetus for this effort and helped it reach completion. I want to offer our blessing on the members of the WNL development staff, but most of all on Dennis Cross, for his confidence, his persistence, and the many hours he has devoted to this effort. I want to offer our blessing on the entire WNL Board of Trustees, who, as you heard last night, from the beginning supported the idea of building Jewish student enrollment by building a place for Jewish life to thrive, and at the end, supported that effort with an unparalleled burst of spontaneous generosity. I want to offer our blessing on the WNL administration and especially President Ruscio for his support. I want to offer our blessing on those who labor to design and construct this building. I want to offer our blessing on the very many alumni donors who contributed so much, so quickly, to make this place possible. And to those who made special gifts of great value and meaning, among them are Toras Grohl, 
our reading table, and many beautiful pieces of art. I want to offer our blessing on the Jewish community of Lexington and Rockbridge and the faculty and the staff of WNL, who have been the pillars of Hillel over many years, who contributed eagerly to the construction of this house, and who will share it as a spiritual and a social gathering place with our students. I want to offer our blessing on our students, past, current, and future, for whom this house is intended and who infuse this house and this university with their enthusiasm, their spirit, and their sense of Jewish identity. Most of all, I want to offer our blessing on the one person who has held on to this dream the longest, worked the hardest, and is the most responsible for the occasion of our gathering today, Joan. Jews don't use the term miracle lightly. Miracles are at the heart of the central story of Jewish history, the liberation from slavery in Egypt. So to say that standing here, in front of this beautiful building, in the company of our friends and our family, on this beautiful day, to say that is somewhat of a miracle, then you know that the collective determination and action of all those who made this possible have in fact made real God's hope for us to act like human beings and to build a better world of justice, understanding, and peace. I end by asking all of you to join me in the traditional Hebrew blessing set at, the, set at important life milestones and special occasions, including most appropriately moving into a new house. In this blessing called the Shehekianu, we thank God for keeping us alive and healthy to celebrate this special moment together. If you would rise and please join me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehekianu Vikiyamanu Vihigianu Lazman Hazer. Amen. Thank you, Hank. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the president of the university, Ken Ruscio. President Ruscio became the president of Washington and Lee in 2006. He's a member of the class of 1976, and while a student here, he belonged to ODK, Contact, Ma Khan, and other organizations. President Ruscio earned an MPA in 1978 and a PhD in 1983 from Syracuse's Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs. He's held many positions at WNL, including the Assistant Dean of Students, Professor of Politics, Associate Dean of the Williams School, and Dean of Freshmen. President Ruscio has supported the Hillel House from the very beginning often speaking about his commitment on the part of the university to build a welcoming place for Jewish students. We also thank Kim Ruscio for joining Ken and personally supporting this project financially. President Ruscio. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is a big deal. <laughs> Um, I just want to offer a, a few comments, uh, setting the context and setting the framework for this, and then also a few words of thanks to um, several individuals. As Hank mentioned, the origins of the Hillel House go back to a commitment from the Board of Trustees to reinvigorate Jewish student life here on campus and increase Jewish student enrollment. Phil Norwood was the rector at the time. He encouraged interim president Harlan Beckley to appoint a committee to look into that. And very soon, the construction of the Hillel House became the centerpiece and the foundation for those broader goals. It is going to increase Jewish student enrollment. It is going to improve the community, the Jewish community life here, not just on campus, but in the surrounding community but it will also improve the community at large here at Washington and Lee. Any of us who have seen the house and the activity around it over the last two to three weeks know that it is bringing the entire community together as well as the Jewish community. I, I, just a couple of uh, little footnotes about the house. 
that I don't want to get lost in the midst of our broader celebration of it. A few things that tell you a little bit about the house. It first of all represents a real commitment to sustainable development. Natural materials such as the bamboo floors, the inclusion of state-of-the-art mechanical systems, the installation of the rain garden and parking spaces for hybrid vehicles. The design paid close attention to the footprint of this building. It will ultimately be recognized as a LEED certified building. The house stands on the site of the old Phi Epsilon Pi fraternity where Sam White among others lived for a couple of years. Other alumni in the audience probably lived here as well. In typically Washington and Lee fashion, this house stands for the future with deep connections to our past. The four million for the Hillel House was paid for completely with the support of over 165 donors, including WNL alumni, members of the Board of Trustees, parents, and friends. Every single one of those people is important, and many others as well. And we would not be here today without the generous support of all of you. I'd like to draw your attention to a few individuals and donors for their exemplary leadership support. You have already heard a great number of comments about Joan Robbins and Dennis Cross. And I personally would be remiss if I did not mention my own appreciation for all that they have done. One of the benefits of my job as, as this project moved on was hearing, I guess what I would call reports from the field, from Joan and Dennis when they went out and met with alumni and they met with parents and met with friends. And inevitably, when Dennis comes back from a trip, the first two or three lines are, John Smith committed X number of dollars to this project and we should celebrate it. Here are some of the things he told me. When Joan and Dennis came back from meeting with people about the Hillel project, it would go like this. We have so many stories to tell you. Abraham Lincoln used a phrase in a much different context called the mystic chords of memory. And this project is so reminiscent of the mystic chords of memory. And so I would hear those stories from Dennis and Joan, and I heard a few of them directly myself. And then we would find out, well into the stories, the commitment. This is personally meaningful to so many people, and I think Dennis and Joan took such pride themselves in as much as anything having those conversations with people about their time at Washington and Lee and about their experience as Jewish students at Washington and Lee. I want to recognize the ZBT class of 1959. On the occasion of their 50th reunion, they made the Hillel House a priority and contributed 1.4 million. We are glad to have three members of that fraternity in that class here today, Steve Marks, Steve Friedlander, Friedlander and Don Sigmund. I want to recognize Don Childress, who could not be with us this weekend. He is the rector of the Board of Trustees currently, member of the class of 1970. Don designated 500,000 of his campaign commitment as a challenge to the campaign to build momentum. Mark Eaker, a member of the class of 1969, made three separate gifts, gifts to the Hillel House. And a story that has now become part of the Washington and Lee lore and legend. There was $470,000 left. And Mark and Don Childress were at a Board of Trustees meeting. They were walking in from the Hampton Inn. Mark, a man of action, said, we just have to get this thing done. He said, I'll do half, and I'll challenge others to do the other half. By the time they got to the dinner of the Board of Trustees here at Evans Dining Hall, word had begun to spread around. A few of his fellow trustees started making the rounds around the table. Dennis was following close behind with the name cards <laughs> on which he was writing the pledge and having them sign it. And by the time dessert was served, we had made that $470,000 goal. So Mark, thank you very much for doing that. The E Cafe is named in memory of Mark's parents, Mickey and Lily Eaker. 
When we enter the building in just a few moments, we will see a list of leadership donors in the multi-purpose room. And we are proud to have the following key supporters here today. Dan Einstein, class of 83. Barbara Lehman, parent of two alumni. Steve Marks, class of 59. Don Sigmund, class of 59. Steve Friedlander, class of 59. Mark and Eva Horn, who are parents of students. Howard Rosenblum, uh, class of 61. Ali Mandel, class of 50. Jim Sagner, 62. Max Shapira, class of 65. Ted Van Leer, class of 51. Billy Webster, class of 79. Paul Weinstein, class of 55. David Freefield, 83 Law. Mark Schuel, 69. Elliot Schuel, class of 45. Three generations of whites. Sam White, who I mentioned a few minutes ago, class of 50 Law. Eric White, class of 74. Mike White, class of 10, couldn't be with us, but I wanted to mention him. He is responsible for the design of the logo here at the Hillel House. So we thank all of them. Last, uh, let me mention uh, Stan Mitchell, who is here with us today, and Alan Corwin, who because of an accident, he's fine, but because of an accident, couldn't be with us this weekend. He very much wanted to be here. Both of them have donated the stunning art that really completes this house, and we are deeply grateful for those contributions as well. Finally, I want to, you know, just one other comment about the house and what it means here at Washington and Lee. Here at Washington and Lee, our buildings reflect our values. Whether it's the grace and strength of the colonnade or whatever building we can point to, it is much more than a collection of bricks and mortars or shingles or roofs or floors or windows. George Washington wrote a letter to the oldest synagogue in the United States in Newport, Rhode Island. And he said, in America, we give to bigotry no sanction, to persecution no assistance. The Hillel House represents a place for Jewish students and the rest of the community to gather, but it's also a deep reflection of the values that we hold dear here at Washington and Lee. It is a privilege and honor to be a part of this project, and I thank all of you who helped make this possible. Thank you. Thank you, President Ruscio. We couldn't have done it without you. Now I'd like to introduce Brian Cherry, class of 2011, co-president of Washington and Lee Hillel. Brian is a senior from the Philadelphia area, double majoring in economics and business. He's been active in Hillel since his first year. He's a member of Chi Psi fraternity and is also a peer tutor. Brian. Good morning, everyone. This house is absolutely beautiful. The high expectations I and many other students have for this house were not only reached but surpassed. I spent a lot of time in this building, so of course it is nice to enjoy its aesthetic and modern features. But this building is much more than that. It gives me great pleasure to say that Jewish students now have a home at Washington and Lee. Now, I'm a senior, even if I refuse to admit it, so I spent three years as a member of Hillel when we didn't have this house this foundation. I've gotten a lot out of being a member of WNL Hillel during my time here. I felt a strong sense of community as a member of this organization. That feeling has only gotten stronger as of late. Through Hillel, I've dined with professors, seen local landmarks such as the National Bridge, and witnessed a camel walking across Cannon Green. When I was a sophomore, I had the opportunity to travel to Israel through the Birthright Program, through which I saw the entire country and expanded my sense of Jewish identity. My parents are still jealous. Last year, Hillel traveled, traveled to Montevideo, Uruguay to do community service and learn about Jewish life in South America. The trip was a lot of fun, but also an eye-opening look at poverty. It has certainly had a lasting impact on all who went. I have made the most of my Hillel experience at Washington and Lee, and I can only expect it to get better for others in the years to come. But let's talk about this brand new house. I'll be honest. When I was a first year student here, and I would attend Halal events, I didn't always mind having to go to a tiny room in the commons. 
I didn't always mind trekking across campus to the alumni house for Shabbat services. I didn't always mind the fact that Hillel's supplies could be found in random closets and cabinets across campus. I didn't always mind because I was new to the school and I didn't know any better. I just thought that was the way things were. As I spent more time here, got used to the way of things, and became more involved with Hillel, the lack of a home base for Hillel started to bother me a little bit. I always felt like I was in somebody else's space. I felt the way, well, because I was. We always had to rent out rooms in the university buildings if we were to have any sort of gathering. I just didn't feel right, and I know I wasn't alone in this thinking. I would speak with my Jewish friends at other schools, many of which have centers for Jewish life, and quite frankly, I would get a little jealous. I came to terms with the belief that WNL is a southern school with a fairly small student body, and as such, it would never have a Hillel house or anything of the like. So you can probably imagine everyone's excitement when we heard that Hillel House would be built here at Washington and Lee. And now it's here. The house has an e-cafe where members of the Washington and Lee community can enjoy New York bagels, smoothies, and kosher deli sandwiches. There is a large multi-purpose room that can be used for meetings, dinners, and services. There is a kitchen that students and community members have access to for the preparation of Shabbat dinners and other events. Upstairs there is a board room which can be used for formal meetings and is currently serving as a classroom. There is also a small lounge containing comfortable furniture and a television. This house brings a Jewish experience at Washington and Lee full circle. I am absolutely thrilled to have been able to see this before graduating, and I'm sure it will benefit this campus community for years to come. Thank you. Of course, the students are the reason we have this beautiful house, and they have been uh, an enthusiastic part from the very beginning. I'm thrilled to say that there are some former students here, too, Doug and Larry Brown, who got things going in the 90s, and Robin Oaken, who was a, a president um, in 2003. So thank you students for being the reason for us all today. Now I'd like to introduce Deb Geiger from Hillel's International Center. Deb Geiger uh, is the director for the SORF Initiative at, the, at Hillel's International uh, Center in Washington. Within these positions, she oversees 200 Hillel student organizations located in 40 states. Deb also works to help 30 peer network campuses succeed in engaging over 3,000 Jewish students each year. Deb has also been instrumental in fostering partnerships with Masa Israel Journey, furthering both Hillel and Masa Israel's goals of increasing the number of Jewish students spending significant time in Israel. Deb created the Small and Mighty Campuses of Excellence Initiative at 13 small liberal arts schools, including Washington and Lee, Facil facilitating stronger Jewish campus life at these elite institutions. Deb has been a wonderful resource for us here, for me personally, by providing training, grants, and the opportunity for students to travel internationally to Israel and to Uruguay. Uh, thank you so much, Deb, for everything. Uh, and let me introduce Deb Geiger. Thank you, Joan, for that lovely introduction. And thank you, Washington and Lee and Lexington community members, for making me feel so welcome. As Joan mentioned, my name is Deb Geiger, and I'm the director of the SORF Initiative at Hillel Schusterman International Center. It's a great privilege to be here with you today, celebrating such a significant moment in Washington and Lee's history. I bring with me greetings from Wayne Firestone, the president of Hillel International, and along with the entire board of directors. I'm also proud and excited that a member of our board of directors and a member of our board of governors, Barry Levin and Harry, Harry Rosenblum, are also here with us today, but in their capacity as Washington and Lee alumni. Hillel's mission is to enrich the lives of Jewish undergraduate and graduate students so that they may enrich the Jewish people and the world. This is a large undertaking and Hillel is well aware that it would be impossible without the support of the university on which the Hillel is located. There is no better example that I can think to show true partnership and dedication than the beautiful building in which we sit in the shadow of. This Hillel house is proof of a university who truly invests in Jewish student life and in support for a Jewish community. It is unprecedented in Hillel's history that a building has been funded by as many trustees, emeritus trustees, alumni, and community members who are not Jewish, along with Jewish donors, 
as has occurred with the construction of this amazing structure. This house is a leader in showing what partnership can and should look like. When I began my tenure at Hillel almost four years ago in the world of Soref, my role was to support all campuses with small Jewish populations. It did not matter if the school was a large state school like LSU or a small liberal arts college in Southern Virginia. Each were to receive all the rights and privileges associated with being a Hillel. However, while all of these campuses, almost 200 of them, are worthy of being called Hillel, certain campuses quickly rose up in distinction and proved themselves worthy of a more significant position. These campuses all had the following three criteria. They had significant university investment in the growth of Jewish student life. They were a top US News and World Reports university. And they had a growing Jewish student population. Once I came to realize that there was a critical mass of these types of campuses, each of whom had a professional that was yearning for a group of colleagues and for a greater connection with Hillel International, I formed a cohort designated the Small and Mighty Campuses of Excellence. I'm proud to say that Washington and Lee was among the first six campuses, along with Colgate University, Lehigh University, Franklin and Marshall College, Williams College, and Middlebury College to benefit from being part of this group. As a member of this cohort, Washington and Lee has received several benefits which have been essential in helping grow Jewish student life here. Aiding the campus in achieving its goals of stronger Jewish student presence, Joan met with her colleagues from other campuses for specialized training that was tailored to fit campuses with the demographics of a small liberal arts institution. The students have received grants to help them participate in meaningful Jewish experiences, like their amazingly successful alternative spring break program in Uruguay last year. As well, Washington and Lee receives dedicated seats each round of birthright, allowing dozens of Washington and Lee students to benefit from a free trip to Israel and personally explore their own Jewish roots. It's important to stop at this moment and recognize that all these benefits are significant. There is no benefit more significant than the investment that Washington and Lee and the Lexington Jewish community has made in the hiring and supporting of Joan Robbins as director of Washington and Lee Hillel. When I first when I first started, when I first started at the Schusterman International Center, Joan was a wonderful support to me to help me learn what life was like as a, at a SOAR campus. As an alum myself of Barnard College and George Washington University, I had a learning curve to understand what life was like for a small Jewish community and how I could best support the growth of these types of institutions. I truly view the work that I have done on these small and mighty campuses of excellence as a definition of being an indispensable campus partner, one of the goals in Hillel's strategic plan. This relationship is a partnership to which each side brings support, dedication, and commitment to a greater goal. Together, we have all worked to enjoy the benefits and successes illustrated by today's ceremony. As I mentioned earlier, Hillel's mission is to enrich the lives of Jewish students so they may enrich the Jewish people and the world. No better example of living this mission is what Washington and Lee accomplished last year by supporting and sponsoring Hillel's first ever alternative spring break trip. As a member of the Small and Mighty Campuses of Excellence, one of the requirements was facilitating this type of experience. To be honest, at first Joan was a little bit concerned about this undertaking. Birthright trips were something she was familiar with, but alternative break was a new challenge. As with most things Joan sets out to do, she exceeded all expectations for success. Last year, 14 Hillel members from Washington and Lee spent a week in Uruguay participating in what I have heard to be an amazing and transformative experience. It truly epitomizes enriching the Jewish communities in Uruguay in which they worked and has now committed tzedek, justice, in each of them, which will no doubt impact the world. Since tzedek is such an important part of the Washington and Lee community and the Hillel students, I could think of no more appropriate gift to bring with me on behalf of Hillel International than this tzedakah box. This tzedakah box will hopefully reside for many years in the beautiful building behind me. I always tell everyone I'm extremely lucky to have been given the opportunity to do the work that I do. However, it is on a beautiful morning like this one, surrounded by students, faculty, alumni, and community members, that I truly appreciate the luck which gave me my position at Hillel and allows me to share these special moments with you. I will always be grateful to Washington and Lee community for inviting me to share this day. Thank you, Deb, for those meaningful remarks and also for this 
Sadaka box, which I hope will get filled up very soon. Um, I'd now like to introduce Mark Grunwald, Interim Dean of Washington and Lee School of Law. Mark is the James P. Moore Moorefield Professor of Law and John W. Elrod Law Alumni Association Fellow in Teaching Excellence. <laughs> He's been on the faculty since 1976. Mark earned a BA from Emory University in 1969 and a JD with highest honors in 1972 from George Washington University. Mark's areas of expertise are arbitration law, employment discrimination, employment law, freedom of information law, information privacy, and labor law. Mark and his wife Sally have been associated with Washington and Lee Hillel for 35 years. And Mark, and they have both been in, in, instrumental in creating a warm, welcoming place for Jewish students on campus and also in their homes. Most important to Hillel, Mark has been my secret weapon, leading the Hillel Advisory Board and guiding me every step of the way until the dream of the Hillel House became a reality. most privileged today to speak on behalf of the Washington and Lee and Lexington Jewish communities. The idea I'd like to speak about is connectedness. Being connected to something or not being. Or sometimes being connected in some ways but not others. Sally and I, as Joan mentioned, uh, have been here just under 35 years. Over that time, we've become closely connected to Washington and Lee and to Lexington. I've worked at Washington and Lee for all those years. Sally taught in the Lexington Public Schools for most of those years. We raised three children here. We lived very happily among both the campus community and the larger area community. By almost all appearances, we couldn't have been more closely connected to both. Yet, in one way, we were disconnected. We were not disconnected because we were Jewish. No, both the Washington and Lee community and the Lexington area community have always been most welcoming to us. The element of disconnection came in another way. As Jews, on some of the most important holy days in our religion, or for some of the most significant days, some of the most significant traditional events, I should say, in the lives of our children, we had to leave Washington and Lee, and leave Lexington. And in that way, we lost a bit of the connection. The loss of connection I speak of uh, is not about convenience or inconvenience. Driving to Roanoke, as often as we did, was not particularly convenient. But we rarely thought about it in those terms. It was not something we were, were required to do, it was something we wanted to do. But we did feel that in doing so, we were disconnecting from where we lived and worked and from the community that we lived in. One important part of our lives simply could not unfold here. Of course, you'll understand that we didn't just sit around feeling disconnected. We did what we could to develop a connection to Jewish life here. Many of you in the audience today were a part of that effort. We started by holding a community Seder at Passover. We then moved on to a Nilos service and a break the fast at the conclusion of Yom Kippur. But it was all rather ragtag, which in some ways even highlighted the disconnect. The next step, an important one, was founding a Hillel chapter. And the chapter, despite our best efforts, limped along quite a while 
before we made a decision that was critical to bringing us here today. And you won't be surprised what that is. We asked Joan Robbins to become the director of Hillel. Under Joan's leadership, Hillel blossomed, and so did the number and quality of Jewish life activities we were able to undertake. The number of Jewish students and the proportion of them engaged with Hillel grew. Hillel became a vital and functioning part of the Washington and Lee and Lexington communities. But despite Hillel's growing success, a part of the disconnect remained. We still left Lexington far too often. And if anyone took a look around town, they saw a charming community with deep historic roots and scores of houses of worship, but none a part of the Jewish tradition. Both in a practical way and in a symbolic way, Jewish members of the Washington and Lee and Lexington communities continued to be in part disconnected. You no doubt see where I'm going. This house which stands behind me with its many links to Jewish life and tradition and its prominent position on the campus and in town provides in ways that many sincere efforts and the best intentions never could a practical and a symbolic connection for Washington and Lee Jewish students, faculty, staff, and alumni with the place in which they live, work, and learn. The high holiday services conducted in the house just in the past two weeks were the immediate realization of that connection. We didn't leave the campus. We didn't leave Lexington. We observed the holy days in a place built in part for that purpose. The feelings we felt simply can't be described here. We shared an overwhelming sense of pride, fulfillment, and yes, connectedness. But I don't want to leave you with the impression that this feeling of connectedness works only in one direction. To acknowledge that you are connected to something else is also a way of saying it is connected to you. Or in our case today, the connection that we feel to the Washington and Lee community through the Hillel House also creates a connection for the community to Jewish life. By which I mean Jewish ritual, customs, tradition, Jewish spirit, Jewish values, and yes, even Jewish food. Students and faculty at Washington and Lee who are not Jewish and non-Jewish members of the Lexington community have already begun to enjoy the warmth and beauty of the house. The lunch line in the E Cafe is long every day. The multi-purpose room in just a few short weeks has hosted films, lectures, meetings, and social events. The multimedia conference room located on the second floor, has hosted not only conferences, but seminars and small classes. Everyone who enters the house sees the Shalom panel, the Jerusalem stone wall, the hand washing stand, the mezuzahs, the Chagall posters, and the many other features of identity apart from the art, the Torah, and the eternal life. They are reminded of connections they already have through their own religious traditions or through Jewish friends and acquaintances. Or they began a connection, become interested in, and learn about things not familiar to them. The vibrancy of Jewish life and the Jewish people becomes a part of their experience and their connection to Washington and Lee and to Lexington. We could not have hoped for more. A connection has been reestablished that inspires us today and that will benefit generations to come. A formal link with the ancient teachings and traditions of our people, our celebrations of life and its purposes, 
our aspirations for peace and justice has been created in our community. We will all be enriched on behalf of the present and future members of the Washington and Lee and Lexington community. I thank all of you for all you've done to bring us to this day. Shalom. So many of us have been crying for weeks now, and I, I hope I can go on. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Malcolm. At this point, I'd like to call President Ruscio and Graham Sheridan, a member of the class of 2011, to please come up to uh, hang the mezuzah on the terrace door. This mezuzah is a small box containing a parchment scroll inscribed with verses from the Torah. It will be affixed to the doorpost of this Hillel house and you will see mezuzahs on the doorpost of each room in the house. Written on the parchment are two passages from Deuteronomy. The first passage is the commandment to write the words of God upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates. The second is the Shema an important prayer proclaiming the sovereignty of one God. The mezuzahs on the doorposts of each room in this house have been provided by donors. Thank you so much for your support. Now Graham Sheridan will say the blessing and President Ruscio will hang the mezuzah. Thank you, Graham. And President Ruscio, that was beautiful. Shalom. 